want to see the prettiest lakes, mountains, canyons, and waterfalls? Banff, Jasper, and Yoho National Parks in Canada are just what you're looking for. Banff and Jasper National Parks are the most famous and the most visited park in Canada. Along with the lesser known Yoho National Park next door, they offer the most beautiful lakes, glaciers, waterfalls, and canyons in the world. This video is about Banff National Park. I'll have other videos about Jasper and Yoho National Parks. Check them out. The links are in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Here are the top sites at Banff National Park from the town of Banff to the northern boundary of the park. These places are reachable by car or a short hike, suitable for active, mature people like me. The town of Banff is the largest in Banff and Jasper National Parks and a good base to explore the area. The downtown area is quaint but crowded, with a nice collection of shops, restaurants, and hotels. During the peak season, you will probably need to park by the train station and take the shuttle buses to the downtown and the attractions. The downtown area is within walking distance from the train station for most people. Around downtown, you can visit the Cascades of Time Garden with a fantastic view of Banff Avenue for free. It's worth a stop if you have a bit of time and already walking around in downtown. Also in the downtown area, the hike along Bow River to Bow Falls is a nice stroll to a set of rapids that would not call it a waterfall. It's a nice diversion if you have an extra hour. A short bus ride or drive from downtown is the Cave and Basin National Historical Site. Our Discovery Pass was good for the admission, otherwise it's $8.50 for adults and free for kids under 17. If you are interested in some history and hot springs, it's worth a visit but you cannot soak in the spring here. Fairmount Bam Springs Hotel is iconic and worth a quick stop and perhaps a stay, but only if you can afford the $1,500 per night. Want a nice aerial view of downtown Banff? Well, it's $70 Canadian for a round trip ticket on the Banff Gondola to Sulphur Mountain. Or you can hike the 6.8 mile round trip with nearly 2,500 feet of elevation gain which is tough for most people. There are two alternatives to the Banff gondola that can get you nearly as nice of a view of Banff, but for a lot less effort or cost. The first is Tunnel Mountain. It's a smaller mountain in the town of Banff and rises a thousand feet from Banff, enough to get you an excellent view on all sides, but without too much effort. Tunnel Mountain Trail is 2.8 miles round trip with 875 feet of elevation gain from the lower trailhead on St. Julian Road. But if you start from the Tunnel Mountain Road trailhead, you will shave off half a mile and 130 feet of elevation gain. Along the way, you get fantastic views of all sides of the mountain, including the Fairmount Bam Springs Golf Course and Mount Rundle to the southeast. The Plains to the northeast, Cascade Mountain to the north, and the town of Banff to the north and the west. The views of Banff was just high enough to be interesting, yet close enough to be intimate. Tunnel Mountain, also known as Sleeping Buffalo Mountain by the First Nation, is not as well known, but certainly worth a hike. The other way to get a nice view of the town of Banff and the surrounding mountains is to go up Mount Norquay. When I say go up, I don't mean a hike. You can actually drive to the viewpoint about 15 minutes away from Banff, which has a very nice view of the town of Banff for free. It's well worth a stop. If you drive further up the mountain, you reach Mount Norquay Ski Resort. A chairlift takes you further up the mountain to 7,000 feet of elevation, which is about 1,500 feet above Banff for a great view of the town and the surrounding mountains. The tickets are $43 Canadian, and uh, in the wintertime, Mount Norquay is a ski resort. Lake Minnewanka area near Banff has the large Lake Minnewanka, Johnson Lake, and Two Jack Lake. As you drive to Lake Minnewanka, there is a turn off for Johnson Lake. Johnson Lake is a nice stop for hiking around the lake or to swim in the lake. 
It is the warmest lake in Banff because it's spring, not glacier fed. But because of that, it also does not have the signature turquoise color of the other lakes in the area. The loop around the lake is two miles with the elevation change of 242 feet. It's a very nice hike in the wooded area on the north side. The southern side has consistent view of the lake. The loop hike was just perfect to stretch our legs. It's worth a stop if you have the time or if you want to go for a swim. Further down the drive to Lake Minnewanka is Two Jack Lake with a campground and an excellent viewpoint. Make the quick stop if you're not in a hurry to get to Lake Minnewanka. Shortly after that is the first viewpoint for Lake Minnewanka. It's good for a quick stop as the first view of the lake. Like many popular areas in Banff, you need to get to the Lake Minnewanka parking lot before 10 a.m. to get a parking spot. The parking lot was full when we got there after our Johnson Lake hike at around 11, so we had to come back later in the day. There is plenty to do at Lake Minnewanka, including a cruise to Devil's Gap, canoe rentals, swimming, fishing, picnicking, and hiking. You can easily spend a day here to enjoy all the activities. This is a highly recommended stop. Going north from Banff, Johnston Canyon is 30 minutes away on Bow Valley Parkway. It's also known as Highway 1A. It parallels Highway 1, the Trans-Canada Highway. It's a slower and more scenic route. Johnston Canyon is not especially deep, but offers an excellent hike on the side of the canyon, so to speak. The trail is mostly a narrow platform bolted to the side of the canyon that is barely wide enough for two people to pass. You are walking on the side of the canyon, elevated from the stream below, with great views in every direction. The hike to Lower Falls is 1.4 miles round trip, with an elevation gain of 344 feet, so it's not hard. The first reward on the hike is Lower Falls. While powerful and loud, it's not especially tall at only 30 feet. A spur from the trail leads to a bridge that crosses right in front of Lower Falls with a fantastic view of the waterfall. If you want a closer, wetter look, go through the opening of a cave on the other side of the bridge. Well, the best laid plans sometimes don't happen. We had intended to go at least to the Upper Falls of Johnston Canyon and maybe even onto the Incox. But shortly after the Lower Falls, the trail is closed because some danger thing. Don't know what it is. So we gotta head back. Upper Johnston Canyon Falls is 100 feet tall, more than three times Lower Falls. So it's probably much more impressive. Johnston Canyon is very well known and it's relatively close to Banff, so it draws a lot of visitors. The trail is narrow, which means you may be stuck behind a slower person and not be able to pass. During the peak season, get there as early as you can, definitely before 10 a.m. to get a parking spot. You may have to brave the crowd to Lower Falls. About half of the people do not continue beyond Lower Falls, so the crowd thins out beyond Lower Falls. I wish we were able to continue to Upper Falls and the Ink Pot, but that wasn't in the cards for us. Johnston Canyon to just the Lower Falls is overrated. We got an early start, so it wasn't so bad, but as we returned, there was a steady stream of people coming up. The hike to Upper Falls is a must-do site. Get there early to avoid the crowd. You can actually get your morning coffee at the shack which is a coffee stand near the start of the trail. 45 minutes north of Banff is the most famous lake in Canada, Lake Louise. The turquoise color of the glacier-fed lake, flanked by tall mountains, a glacier and an iconic hotel, is simply stunning 
and it is absolutely a must visit site. Even though I've seen many pictures of Lake Louise, my jaw still dropped when I first saw the lake. While I've seen turquoise colored glacier fed lakes before, Lake Louise is the most picturesque lake because it is flanked by very tall mountains. My eyes naturally gravitated toward the opposite end of the lake as the mountains tapered into the distance glacier. The main viewpoint is only a few hundred feet from the parking lot. It is usually very crowded as most people stop to look at the magnificent scenery and jostle for position to take a picture. The average person spends 15 minutes here at Lake Louise. They probably come out, stand right where you see there, take a few pictures and leave. Man, they're missing out a lot. When you come to Lake Louise, yes, everybody stops right as you enter, but try to walk away quickly away from there to the Lake Shore Trail, which goes along the lake. And as further up you go, the less people you get. And uh, the view is just as good out here. So spread out a little bit and go where the people aren't. Yes, the scenery is beautiful. If you have the dough, the Fairmount uh, Lake Louise Chateau is a wonderful place and it gets you out of the conundrum of not being able to go to the park. But it is expensive and it is beautiful. It's got great restaurants in it. Uh, so if you can, do it. If you can't, well, stay in Lake Louise. You can rent a canoe for an experience right on the lake, but it is pricey at $130 for one hour, the most expensive of all the lakes. Well, it's eight o'clock in the morning and at the Lake Louise Boathouse, there's already a very long line waiting for them to open so that uh, they can rent a canoe to go on the lake. It is indeed crowded here. To get a higher vantage point of Lake Louise, hike to the Lake Agnes Tea House and the Big Beehive. We didn't do it, but if you're up to it, it's a great day hike. 15 minutes from Lake Louise is Moraine Lake, another picturesque turquoise colored lake that rivals Lake Louise. It is also a must do site. The Rock Pile Trail is a short but steep hike to the observation point at Moraine Lake. It is a must-do trail at Moraine Lake. Hiking up to this beautiful observation deck gives you a beautiful view of Moraine Lake with the turquoise water that's, uh, you see that in this bright sun. While we were wondering what happened to all the people who were hiking the Lake Shore Trail, there they are. They all come off the bus. They come up to this viewpoint, which is gorgeous. Great photo opportunities. But here are all the people, all taking pictures. This is very reminiscent of the lakefront over at the Lake Louise. Lake Moraine Lakeshore Trail goes around Lake Moraine and is extremely tranquil. It is, goes right along the lakeshore, as the name suggests, and it's got just beautiful views all the way around. Many openings through the trees so you can get a full view of the lake. At the end of Moraine Lake Trail, you have this beautiful brook that is cascading down, apparently from the glacier that feeds right into the lake. Now, if you were to compare Moraine Lake with Lake Louise, I would say that both have its uh, beautiful points. Moraine Lake is a, must, is a smaller lake and is surrounded by these huge tall peaks that makes it a lot more intimate and very, very approachable. And we notice that the uh, lake water here is a little clearer than uh, we, were, we saw it yesterday at uh, Lake Louise. And it is more intimate. Whereas Lake Louise is more grand, uh, Lake Louise has its focal point into the glacier at the end of the lake as you watch it. Uh, this one is just beautiful with all the surrounding mountains. 
The glacier-fed lakes have the unreal turquoise color from glacial flower, created by pulverizing rocks as a glacier grinded its way down. The particles are so fine, they are slow to sink to the bottom. When the sunlight hits the water, the blue and the green are reflected, making the stunning turquoise color. It is very important to plan ahead to visit these stunning lakes. Make sure you watch the tips for visiting Banff, Jasper, and Yoho video. The link is in the description. Consolation Lakes are near Moraine Lake. It's a 4.7 mile round trip to the second lake, but the mileage is deceiving. At the beginning of the trail, there is a section of big rock pile. There is a groomed trail through the rocks, so the path is not that difficult in this section. The trail then goes into the woods for a nice steady climb until it reaches the first lake. This is where the work and the fun comes in. There are large rocks along the shore of the lake that you must scramble with uneven footing all the way to the second lake, about a half a mile. It is very slow going and requires good balance as you hop from rock to rock. Try to keep your hands free in case you need to brace yourself. At Moraine Lake, the rock pile trail to the observation point is a must-do site, even with the crowd. If you want a flat trail that takes you to a different view of the Moraine Lake, the Lake Shore Trail is a must-do site. If you want to have some fun scrambling around the big rocks, then Constellation Lake Trail is highly recommended. We did all three in most of one day. There were cute chipmunks looking at us curiously and perhaps looking to be fed. Hopefully, they were not trained by others to look for food from people. It is illegal to feed wild animals, even the cute chipmunks. Continuing north from the town of Lake Louise, you enter the Ice Fields Parkway, often viewed as a top 10 scenic drive in the world. Crowfoot Glacier and Bow Lake are right on Ice Fields Parkway, just north of Lake Louise. This is probably your first stop north of Lake Louise on the Ice Fields Parkway. Bow Lake, with its turquoise color and Crowfoot Glacier in the mountain above it, are simply beautiful. Further in the distance, on the right side of the lake, is Bow Glacier. This viewpoint is right on the side of the road for easy access. This is a highly recommended stop because it's beautiful and quick. Shortly after Bow Lake, we get to what I think is the prettiest lake in Banff, Peto Lake. The viewpoint is a short but steep hike from the normal parking lot, although there is a disabled and bus parking closer to the main viewpoint. Peto Lake, one of the beautiful lakes up in the Canadian Rockies here on the Icefield Parkway. It is the highest point on the parkway at uh, something like 67 or 6800 feet. And uh, it's a short hike up here, but it is kind of steep. And because of the elevation, you will feel your breath. The path is wheelchair accessible. You have the main panorama viewpoint where most of the people go, but if you hike further down, a little bit more and you have this great view out here without the railings and the rock outcropping. Fantastic view. I think this view is better than the other one. Better scenery and less people. In exchange for a half mile hike? Ah, I take that anytime. Peto Lake is a must stop in Banff. Continuing north for another 25 minutes brings you to Mastaya Canyon. The Mastaya Canyon Trail is a short walk from the parking lot over to this uh, bridge. And then you can go down a little bit more. It's uh, got a lot of water flowing to this canyon that is uh, very narrow. It can really appreciate the power of the water. Now, while it's fairly short, it is uh, pretty steep. So you go downhill all the way there and uphill all the way back. It's about 100 feet elevation change in about a third of a mile. 
I think it's well worth the uh, time to hike down and uh, watch the waterfall. It's kind of mesmerizing, actually. If you're doing a full day drive on the Icefields Parkway, then Mastaya Canyon is an excellent stop. There is a better canyon in Jasper National Park. Mastaya Canyon is a highly recommended site, especially if you're not going to Jasper. Banff National Park is a tremendous park to visit, with stunning scenery and so much to do. No wonder it's so popular. With popularity, planning is required. Be sure to see the video on tips for visiting Banff, Jasper, and Yoho National Parks. The link is in the description below. We are on our way to visit all the national parks in the United States, but we're taking a short break to visit the top Canadian national parks. Be sure to subscribe to follow our journey and please give this video a thumbs up.